All right, well, Larry Flint has died. He was 78 years old. His obscenity trial in Cincinnati made, of course, national headlines at the time, and it was turned into the movie The People vs. Larry Flint. His adult entertainment empire included Hustler magazine and stores that are still in downtown Cincinnati right now. And Flint pushed the limits of free speech, as we know, and, and won a U.S. Supreme Court First Amendment case, even. WCPO covered all of that for you, going all the way back to the 1970s. Reporter Jake Ryle spent tonight combing through those archives. He built Hustler Magazine into an adult entertainment empire, and his run-ins with Cincinnati come as an unlikely champion of the First Amendment. The year 1977. Larry Flint, the owner of the Hustler Club in downtown, created a newsletter about his clubs, Hustler Magazine. And Hamilton County courts weren't having it. He was convicted on obscenity and organized crime charges. Well, they feel very much threatened by Hustler Magazine and by me because it's one thing they can't control. It was a showdown between him and then prosecutor Simon Lease. We'll put limitations. The people in this country, will, in this county, will put limitations on how far the, the smut peddlers can go. Flint would later win on appeal, but the magazine wouldn't be sold in the county for two decades. One year later, an assassination attempt would paralyze him from the waist down. But his fight in Cincinnati was just beginning. 20 years later... What do you expect will happen when you go out there to try to sell Hustler by the square? I have no idea. If they do the smart thing, they'll probably just ignore me. Larry! 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 A new store in the 90s on 6th Street came with a crowd of those both for and against the opening. Oh. I imagine it'll level off, but remember, this will still be the only place in Hamilton County to buy the magazine. And with his return, another court case. This is about the First Amendment. I think the people in Cincinnati should have the right to decide on their reading material. He would continue to fight for free speech. I feel like I got a few good years left in my life, and this is a fight that I believe in. Ultimately, his First Amendment fight in Cincinnati would lead to a multi-million dollar empire. Jake Ryle, WCPO, 9 News. Flint's case before the U.S. Supreme Court stemmed from a lawsuit filed by televangelist Jerry Falwell Sr. In that case, the high court ruled public figures cannot collect damages for the intentional infliction of emotional distress if it was caused by satire, parody, or a caricature that a reasonable person wasn't, would know was not factual.